Oh, I was going to say before we start, uh, Simon Parton, right? Yep. Uh, I was sitting on top of Chablanc when you sent Tearmare. It, <laughs> it was incredible. <laughs> Respect. That was so sick. This episode of Plastic Weekly is brought to you by Marco Fiore of Windsor Rock Gym and the rest of my Patreon supporters who help make this show happen by donating a dollar or two each week. I spent a weekend at Windsor Rock Gym last summer and it was maybe the most refreshing session I've ever had. Sometimes you really got to get out of the big city gym bubble. So thanks a million for having my back, Marco, and I hope we'll talk soon. On the topic of my Patreon, I know I thank you all by name, but I wanted to pile on an extra thank you to everyone, whether you started donating right at the beginning of this or if you just signed up this week. It feels great to have this much momentum, and I'm only a couple patrons away from achieving my goal of paying back all of the money I spent on gear to do this podcast. You're all giving me the confidence to consider pushing this project a little further, which you may have noticed with the Canadian Boulder rankings on our website or the ranking update videos, or even some of the video content I've been making to help gyms advertise their live streams. To thank you all for the support, I'd love to design a new sticker sheet with a bunch of climbing related decals and maybe even a t-shirt or something for the serious diehards. If any of my listeners happen to be artists or graphic design folks, please drop me a line. I'd love to offer something new to all of you who have supported me for so long, and I can use it to attract new donors later on. So let me know, and thank you, seriously, again. So anyway, you're probably aware that both the IFSC and USA Climbing have introduced new scoring systems for this season. We got to see the American system in action all year, plus uh, just at the US Open Nationals. And the IFSC system will be used here in Canada at our Canadian Open Nationals early in March. So there's plenty of conversation to have about how these systems work and whether they're an improvement or not. I was very lucky to get four amazing panelists to discuss this, so I'm going to skip all the crap and we're going to get right into it. I hope you enjoy this conversation. And right now I'm joined by four really experienced and honestly really fun people to talk to. Um, First one, Sierra Blair Coyle of Scottsdale, Arizona. She's one of the United States' most prolific international boulderers. Hi, Sierra. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Also, Simon Parton, he's one of Canada's top root setters, joining us from Vancouver. How are you doing, Simon? I am excellent, thank you. Uh, We've also got Will Anglin, one of the co-owners, coaches, trainers, designers for Tension Climbing, joining us from Denver, Colorado. How are you doing, man? Doing well, thanks for having me. And uh, talking to us from from Boulder via Auckland is Eddie Felk, the editor-in-chief of the Circuit Climbing Magazine. Eddie, thanks for taking some time to chat with us. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, uh, well, I'm really glad you guys are all here because in the last couple months, there has been a lot of news developing from the IFSC, but also the United States on changing uh, scoring methodology for bouldering. Uh, And there's a lot to talk about, and I think you guys would be great to discuss it with. I'm not going to go over all of the details and explain all of these methodologies because they can take a lot of words to talk about. But I want us to mostly focus on and start with the new IFSC changes. For anybody that's not aware, um, the bonus hold is going to take back the original name of Zone. uh, And the scoring sequence is changing from the uh, previous tops and then attempts to top and previously bonus and attempts to bonus. It's now switching to number of tops, then followed by number of zones, followed by number of attempts to top, and then if needed, number of attempts to zone. So it goes from a TABA to, I guess what we're gonna call like TZA scoring. I guess I wanna talk to Eddie and Sierra first. There's been very little noise about this scoring change from athletes. And so does that mean that for the most part, athletes are pretty well on the same page and excited for this scoring change? I would say they are. I mean, I haven't personally talked to anyone about it, but um, when I initially heard the news that a scoring change was going to happen, I was like, "Uh oh, what are we doing? You know, scoring changes are usually never a positive thing. But with this one, I ultimately think it was a good decision 
you know, just for me personally, it never made sense why if someone had more bonuses than someone else, they weren't ahead of them if they had the same number of tops. So I think it's a good change. And um, I can't speak for the other athletes, but I think their silence says a lot. Eddie, what about yourself? I know you're in touch with a lot of athletes throughout the year. What have you been hearing? Uh, I am. Firstly, I just want to open with a little clarifying statement. Anything I say here is as the circuit climbing and as Eddie Folk, I'm not saying anything representing the IFSC, even though I'm contracted to them. Um, so most athletes, in fact, every athlete I've heard is in favor of this change because it rewards progress through the problems, which is pretty important. As Sierra was saying, just because someone flashed one problem and then someone else did another problem but took three attempts, but then that other person managed to get every bonus, they were behind the person that just flashed one problem. And this provides an amount of equity. And being that a boulder competition is going to test a range of different styles, it doesn't give as big an advantage to someone who just gets their perfect boulder in a set. All right. We're definitely going to follow up on kind of how that works. Uh, but other big parties that are affected by a change like this are competition organizers and judges and root setters. So uh, the next person I wanted an opinion from was uh, Simon as a root setter, uh, somebody who sets national events and will eventually use this system. Is this going to change a lot of how you have to do your job? Um, I, I think it can. I think it's, um, if there is a change, it's going to be quite subtle. Obviously, the value of uh, a bonus has increased. Um, so I think there's going to be a little bit more root setter focus on the beginning of problems. Um, it, it could make them harder, but I think I'm interested to see what, uh, what comes of it. And then the last change, which which I might just hop to uh, to Will for, is uh, people like judges and competition organizers. In terms of scoring, in terms of judging, is that going to make a, a big difference in, on how we deal with that part of the competition world? From a judging perspective, I don't think it really changes anything. Um, they're still going to be recording attempts and zones in the same way that they've always done. But... As far as, as the scoring goes, it's, it, it changes results. There's, there's no way around that. I just ran the numbers based on the most recent uh, nationals here in the U.S. And kind of, I focused mostly on the women because I felt like it was a little bit closer. And the men's, like, first place was obviously super dominant. Um, and kind of rescored it with a couple different methodologies. And... There's definitely differences. So in that sense, it does very much affect the scoring because it is a scoring rule. <laughs> Back to you, Sierra. This seems like most athletes take it as a positive change. Now, the biggest one, and everybody has brought it up so far, is that it, it values different things than it did before. Simon mentioned it boosts the value of the zone hold, uh, and it seems like athletes are happy that it rewards progress, as you mentioned. Ultimately, this scoring system really changes the inherent values of bouldering. Um, previously, we cared most about tops, but we also put a lot of uh, relevance in how quickly you can get there and, and basically saying that... Yeah, top, no matter how many times it takes you to get there, is more valuable than a bonus. Um, is Do you think that that's a, a fair change in this sport? Do you think it's fundamentally changing uh, how bouldering works? I think so, and I've thought a lot about this. Um, kind of with the old scoring system they were using, it really valued completion, and then the new scoring system values progress. And I think the reason it, vol or it valued completion initially is because, you know, outdoor bouldering, it doesn't count unless you top out, you know. And I think it's important that the distinctions made kind of between outdoors and indoors, you know, because competitions are so different. And um, I really try and, like, talk to people about that a lot. You know, I'm like, competition climbing is not like outside climbing. Like, the competition boulders, you will never find anything like that outside. So it's apples and oranges, so let's stop trying to make them one. Um, so that's why I think that you know, rewarding progress is a really good thing because 
you know, I agree with Eddie. Ultimately, the climber who had one top but more bonuses is probably a better climber for that round than the person with one top and zero bonuses on the other problems. Yeah, the phrase uh, better climber is is an interesting phrase that you have to start discussing now is what makes a really good climber. Um, Eddie, for yourself, with this change, do you feel like it's a, a better representation of who the best climber is? That is in a way tricky to answer because I think the fair representation of who the better climber is is always going to come down to how it's set. Um, so for me, better climber on that set on that day, yes, better climber in general, uh, no. I think, and I just want to quickly jump back to what Sierra was saying, um, the emphasis is still on tops and I think that's really important because in bouldering the climbers get four problems in a finals or in a semis and they have four minutes to solve those problems and the greatest reward is still for solving that problem which I think is integral to our, por our sport and really important but what was happening previously is you were rewarded twice because you were getting the reward for the top then you were getting the attempts to top before the reward on progress. I think just rewarding it once by just giving the top is, is a step in the right direction. Okay. Will, we have kind of talked about this in the past where we're both kind of, as Eddie mentioned, people that really do think the top should be the, the most important part of bouldering. Um, and we'll argue more about this when we start talking about the new US scoring. But do you, do you feel like bonuses are given too much value in this new international scoring system? You know, I really think you can make an argument both ways. And the thing that, that I kind of always come back to, and, it's, and, and again, to kind of mirror something that Sierra said about competition climbing being inherently different than outdoor climbing, to say that it's, it's two different sports and it's, it's not actually like climbing, so it doesn't matter so much if we place different values on things than we would in an outdoor boulder problem, then, then why are we calling it climbing at all? Why are we setting boulder problems? Climbing was first essentially alpinism, really, like going out into the mountains and being like, I'm going to get to the top of that thing, and then doing it initially by any means necessary, right? But if you don't get to the top, then there is no success. Like success in climbing is very binary. You either did it or you didn't do it. And when something is done, the only way to better that is to do it in better style. That's when you get the transition from people sieging these huge peaks with like huge teams and getting into the fast and light alpinism and the stuff that's going on today where You've got people basically running up really technical terrain and tagging all these peaks and doing it really fast and with very little support, and that's considered better style and then valued higher. And so to you know jump past a bunch of history and land in comp climbing today, you've got the top, right? Which I do agree, it's still valued as the highest thing that you can accomplish in the comp, but then... The only way to better a top is to better the style in which you topped the boulder. And a flash or an on-site, that's in better style than, you know, multiple days or multiple attempts or what have you. I don't know. All that to say I get it, but I don't like it. <laughs> okay. Before I go to Simon, um, Sierra, just because... Uh... Uh, Will was kind of uh, contrasting to some of the stuff you mentioned. I think I agree with a lot of Will's points from a historical perspective um, and, and where climbing comes from. But you did draw a line and say that you do feel that sport climbing or competitive climbing specifically is becoming a different thing. Would you be able to broaden your thought on that and, and maybe talk about what's becoming different and why this new scoring is maybe more applicable to sport climbing? Yeah. I definitely see a lot of the points that Will was saying, and um, I was being very, you know, general when I said that, um, that comp climbing is different than outdoor climbing, which I still think for the most part, but I mean, even just like look at the setting, I mean, 
you know, like when was the last time you ran across volumes on your outdoor project? Like it just doesn't happen. And one of the reasons I like that bonuses are valued or zones are going to be valued before attempts to top is we have these problems that sometimes you just get lucky and do them on your first attempt or in a couple of attempts. And other times it's going to take you a bunch of attempts to get the dyno or to get the integrated move or whatever. And, you know, as a competitor, they're constantly throwing new things at you and, you know, you train to try and be good at them. But I like having the cushion of knowing if I get um, some boulder that's just really hard to get the move on timing wise right away that I'm not going to be punished for it versus someone else who, you know, did it a little better, quicker, but, you know, sometimes it just comes down to luck. Um, and I hate saying that because, you know, so much training goes into it. So take that lightly, but competitions, the goal of them, I think is to determine the best climber for that day. And I agree that tops do matter, but the problem comes when, you know, let's just say the person wins the competition and they do one out of the four boulders and then someone else falls at the top of the four boulders. Like, yeah, they didn't technically complete any, but as a climber and as a spectator, you'd probably be like, oh, the person who can get basically to the top and everything is the better climber. Okay. Um, so Simon, ultimately all the stuff we're talking about right now really just comes down to how we break ties. Um, we've all acknowledged that tops are really important. So the attempts, the zones, the attempts to zone, all of those are mechanisms for us to break ties between people who have the same number of tops. Are, are all of these really just fail safes for bad route setting that can't separate by tops? I think you should definitely put faith in the system um, and stop blaming route setters. <laughs> Because, <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't, um, if we were expected to get it perfect every time, you know, we wouldn't have these four degrees of separation that we need, or even five if you go back to the previous round, you know what I mean? Um, so I think, you know, there is a system in place and we need to kind of, it's, it was used. There's so many factors at play. And at the end of the day, you know, sometimes root setters are just gambling it's is this going to happen or isn't it i don't know is it is going to be as hot tomorrow as it was a week ago when we set these boulders um you know we need that system basically let's talk a little about the american scoring system so we've kind of fleshed out our values in terms of root setting and scoring and all that kind of stuff sierra you've climbed now under this new scoring system do you have any first impressions for us from the climber perspective you know, I like the new scoring system. It's definitely a, a good change from our previous scoring system. I don't know what the official name of it was, but, you know, <laughs> Most confusing I like it so far. Ever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the only problem with it, and this could just be from, you know, doing so many World Cups the past couple of years, is the boulder problems are just really long. Um, but other than that, you know, for what it is, I like it. And yeah, it's one of the better systems that they've used in the U.S., in my opinion. I, I think they're definitely right about it being more spectator friendly, if only because now, you know, you don't have to run the math after uh, everybody's done climbing. You have a much better sense of what's going on. Um, Eddie, you got to witness it. You were were you shooting uh, U.S. nationals? Uh, yes, I was. Yep. I got to see it in action there. Uh, look, I think it's a great system. I really did like it, but there is a couple of caveats in me saying that. Um, one, as we've already discussed, it comes down to tops versus progress. I really dislike the fact that someone with two tops can be beaten by someone with no tops. Um, for me, that just doesn't ring true to what I feel a bouldering competition should represent. Uh, as we've all sort of stated, and myself quite strongly, I feel that bouldering is about four minutes to solve a problem and the reward should be in solving the problem. Um, this is a personal opinion. I think the system would be great if they just changed the scoring slightly. I think the 25 for the top is great. I would keep the 10, 10 point zone and the five point zone i would just do away with the 15 point zone altogether um i think the emphasis 
to me was a little bit too taken away from tops in in nationals and yeah it's as i said it's an entirely personal preference i think the system's fantastic i just don't want to see as much for the u.s climbers sake as anything else i don't want to see the system being going down the progress road and then those climbers having to come and adapt in an international setting to a different style of climbing altogether okay um will or simon uh, were either of you guys watching uh u.s nationals i'm curious how you found it from a spectator uh perspective it was good <laughs> it- <laughs> i i definitely have i have some i have all sorts of rants that i i'm gonna try to not totally go on yeah here. let's let's not go into rest uh, but i'm curious <laughs> were you able to follow it easily so um, especially in, in the women's just, field where things weren't completely decided were you able to to you know keep track of everything did it keep you uh, engaged like sierra i'm gonna say yes i like it i think it is a vast improvement over previous scoring methods so you know win one for the scoring system. The main issue I think I have with it is the points themselves. Um, I think climbing is a really hard thing to assign such an objective value for. Like what is what is five to 10 points and, and is a top really worth 10 more points than the 15 point bonus hold? Like where where are these points coming from? And I think where they're coming from is, you know, you get this really nice round 100 number. It becomes very easy to look at the score and understand. But I think if you if you take the U.S. scoring system and, and basically allow multiple zones, but then you score it with the IFSC um, tops and zones rule, I think you get a much more robust system that is more in line with what climbing is about value and, and valuing tops. But, you know, I like, I like having multiple zones, especially from a route setting standpoint. I think it allows you to have more variation because there are some long bolt problems. I don't think they all need to be long, but I don't think they all need to be short. The, the issue though is even with the multi-zone scoring in the U S they're in the route setting clinics and everything. They're really, emphasizing that they don't want like when whenever possible use all use the 5 10 and 15 point zone Mm -hmm. and only in rare exceptions do you just use a single 15 point zone or just a 10 and a 15 and i think if you get rid of the points you kind of remove that issue because it still goes tops and then you know you could argue all day about whether it should then go attempts to tops or zones but if it's just zone one, two, three, and top, and you can be really flexible with the route setting, and you don't have to worry so much about point values, I think you get. That's really what I would like to see. But I'm just one person, and yeah, I think probably too much. About I can it. <laughs> I can imagine, and you know, I think a lot of us have, uh, if not all of us, have you know dabbled in route setting at one point or another. It's definitely hard enough sometimes to figure out which hold you're going to tape as the bonus, let alone like trying to like put a number on it that that I think that would be pretty tough in some situations. Um, I really enjoyed it, which I'm a little bit mad about because I feel like I fundamentally disagree with it. But I had a great time watching. Um, It was really easy to follow. I loved the fact that, you know, the scoreboard was up on the screen a lot of the time. The Um, one thing I do think though is the u.s should consider getting on the world cup scoring system for nationals and our competitions because you know with the olympics coming up and you know this is how the world cups are scored this is how the olympics are going to be scored um i can imagine that it will be difficult for some people to transfer the scoring systems you know just even for me i feel like i perform much better you know on world cup style problems than like the problems at nationals and it just seems silly that we're not on the same page. And I do like the U.S. scoring system. That's the thing. Like, I don't have a problem with it, but it just doesn't match up with the standard. 
Uh, do you have any insight as to as to why there's such a, a divide between American scoring and international scoring? Like the the argument you just made is extremely compelling. The fact that the competitions run by USA Climbing are built to be qualifiers, effectively for the international stage. And when you look at it through that lens, it's very hard to think of an argument that says, "Okay, let's go with some completely different methodology." Yeah, I don't really have the answers to why they're, um, you know, not the same at this point. I mentioned it to one of my friends a couple months ago, and his response was, what well, kind of makes sense with the U.S.? Just, you know, how, like, we're not on the metric system and just kind of try and do things <laughs> our own way. But, I mean, that's the joking answer. I don't know the actual answer. Okay, yeah. I, 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 sorry, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I will. I have maybe a – I don't want to call it insight into that, but I, I don't think we really know – what the best system is yet. And I think the evidence of that is just how many rule changes have happened, you know, in the both in the US and internationally over the years. We're still trying to figure it out. And so on one hand, I, I respect the idea that, you know, the USA climbing doing something different because they they do legitimately feel that it's a better system regardless of what's happening internationally. And to get in and, and more using it as a proof of concept, like you can run comps like this. The public can understand it. The results work out like this is a good way. And as far as I know, I don't think the scoring system for the Olympics has been set in stone. Um, it's still a ways away. And it's possible. I'm, I don't know if it's probable, but it's possible things could change between now and then. Uh, Eddie, did you have a comment? I thought I heard you pipe in. Uh, I did pipe in, but Will basically took the words out of my mouth. I have had the opportunity to speak to um, Keenan and Chris from USA Climbing about the differences between the US philosophy on scoring and the international philosophy on scoring. And, yeah, they are of the belief that their system is the best and that it basically most accurately represents the development of the climber so when you're taking a climber from a junior all the way to a senior you're getting a gauge of of their progression whether i personally agree with that or disagree with that you know i i yeah i don't like to um to draw myself too much into that sort of rules discussion but I think, you know, they are completely within their rights to to explore different scoring opportunities. However, I do agree completely with Sierra that there needs to be some form of preparation for international competition and having internationally scored events would be one of the best forms of preparation for the athletes because then they, they go in and they're climbing for the exact same goal and i'm gonna digress slightly here by using a lead climbing example rather than a bouldering example in u.s lead rules clips count in ifsc international rules clips do not count and one of the u.s climbers that i was speaking to after one of the world cups last year and he had fallen and he was disappointed. And I said, you know, what was going on? And he's like, I made that clip and it pumped me out. I'm like, why didn't you move further? And he's like, because, you know, I thought I need to get the clip. I need to get that point because there's a good chance I can fall anyway. Whereas a World Cup climb is going to go for it and the clip is completely secondary. And that's an example of the different mindset that you get from competing under a different rule set. That's a good example. Uh, Simon, do you have any comment on on this part of the discussion? Um, I just I think uh, I I've, I've spoken with the people who have made the U.S. system as well, and I guess I think it's interesting that they change it every year as well, and also think it's the best every year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, exactly. Like, there's there's nothing against progress, and you know I love trying new things. But, you know, let's let this system sit for a couple of years and see if it changes again. 
I think that's fair. And I, I do think this one is much better than the previous system. So I hope they stick with it for a couple of years. And again, what we all mentioned is, is, you know, climbing is new. There are a lot of things to try. So honestly, I'm glad they're trying it. Um, uh, you just, you know, in a country so big with so many different events, you feel like maybe there are other venues to prototype these new uh, these new systems rather than putting at the one single most important event of the season. I would also add quickly, sorry, um, that the scoring system based on the what I based on what I know of the American system changes the route setting so much. And going back to the argument that you need to prepare athletes when you're going to the the World Cup level, I think you know they're not getting the same type of boulders. So it's really, that's one thing to consider when you're trying to design a new system is maybe it's just best to kind of go with the old one. I would agree gonna, with that. Gonna, sorry, you go, Will. Oh, just just saying yes. I I think it's had a an effect that I can't say that I like on the route setting, and I think it's inherent in, in the idea of attaching a an objective point value and the way that it's it's maybe being being taught and implemented is yeah it's 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 very poor preparation for anything on the international stage yeah and i was gonna basically say something similar which is because yes we've discussed a lot about how it affects the athlete's preparation for international competition it also affects the root setters preparation for international competition because they have to learn within one style and then if they want to become an aspirant root setter at world cups they've got to then think in a different style again that's a good point so all of these changes we've talked about the american system and the international system have been changed basically with the premise that the goal is to make things easier for spectators to understand right um and a lot of it, especially with all the Olympic noise, is about, okay, these people who aren't really part of our sport, how are they going to understand it? First of all, I kind of disagree with that idea. I'm more of a person that would just like to make this sport more watchable for climbers themselves. I think we do a really bad job as climbers of watching our own sport. So I really don't worry about the other people yet. I feel like if we got all climbers to watch climbing, that would be good enough. Um, but from your perspectives, from what you've seen so far, do you feel like these changes, um, the new international and the new U.S. system, do you feel like they make a considerable improvement on the viewing experience? I think they're a step in the right direction. And at the end of the day, I don't think climbing needs to be scored in a way where absolutely everyone who ever watches it, climber or non-climber, understands initially. You know, there are certainly other sports where, you know, you don't understand why one trick is harder than the other, but you understand the theory behind it, you know. And I think it's just about finding that balance of it, keeping it true to climbing but not making it so complex that everyone can't understand. Because, I mean look at the old um, U.S. scoring system we were using, like even people who are very well versed in it just kind of had no idea what was going on. Like I was, you know, going into comps where they'd be using it. And I was like, all right, well, I'm not even going to know if they mess up my score. So, <laughs> you know, fingers crossed on this. So, yeah, I just think um, it needs to be done in the best way possible. So it's true to climbing, but so people who are non-climbers can understand it with, you know, like a five minute explanation. Eddie, what about yourself? Uh, this is one of the biggest things for me because I don't think this comes down to the rule as such. Um, I don't think it actually matters what, well, within reason, what rule you have implemented for scoring. It is how that scoring is portrayed to the public. And for too long at competitions, we've been in the dark as to what the athletes' scores are in a, in a live sense. If you were to go to a basketball game and the scoring screen was out and you just saw a bunch of guys running back back up and down the court getting the ball in the hoop, you'd be like, okay, who won at the end? It's the way that the scoring has to, by the media, be relayed to the public. That is the critical thing. The number of times I've watched back IFSC streams, for instance, and the commentator's like, I, I think this person has to do that because there's not the live scoring. Yes. And that... it. 
you know, it adds confusion. It takes away from the spectacle because you could have huge potential drama, but the commentator doesn't pick it up because he doesn't have live scoring. And you miss the whole thing. And it's like, well, that was a flop. And to me, that's nothing to do with the scoring system. It's about how that scoring system is relayed to the media and through the media to the public. That's a really good point. Um, and if anybody goes back to episode 21 of this show, where I just ramble for a bit about six requirements for a comp live stream, that's one of the things I talk about. Um, so that's it for my shameless plug to a past episode. Uh, Will, yourself, these new scoring systems, do you feel like they are making a considerable improvement to the spectator experience? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to use... I'm going to use a very American example. <laughs> uh, and this is, and this is uh, from a friend of mine who I was chatting with you about before this, um, because I don't really watch football, but I do understand football a little bit. And I think football is a really good example of something where there are a lot of rules. And, but someone can just sit down in front of a football game. And because like Eddie said, the there's, there's live scoring, the commentators are doing a really good job. You can just sit in and watch, you know, that, you know, getting the ball to one end of the field is the point. And you can watch the scoreboard and just kind of sit there and watch a bunch of giant dudes do crazy stuff and still have a fun time watching it and still understand who won. Um, and something that, that happened in the Super Bowl uh, just the other day that I didn't watch but was told about. Um, <laughs> so the it was who who was playing in it? It was the Eagles and the Patriots. And the Patriots. Yeah. yeah. So and this kind of I, I think this is a good thing for me to kind of close on because it ties in a lot of what we've been talking about. So uh, Tom Brady set a like an all-time record like nfl record during that game for throwing yards no one else in that game set any sort of a record but the eagles won because the eagles got more touchdowns and touchdowns are what gives you points and makes you win the football game so someone who maybe knows a lot about football could watch that football game and watch the two teams play and be like, well, the Patriots actually played better football. They had more passing yardage and they did a better job. But at the end of the day, the Eagles won because the Eagles scored more touchdowns. And so to, to make that a metaphor for the climbing, like it's, it's the tops. Like it doesn't matter who climbed super well, who topped the boulders, who got, who who did it <laughs> uh and that's kind of my argument for for tops versus progress but you can still watch that football game and because of the way the scoring is relayed to you you understand what's happening and i do think that the the u.s scoring system is totally a good step in the in the right direction i think the previous scoring system no matter how well you were able to relay it you honestly couldn't tell people exactly what was going to happen until the comp ended because of the way things were weighted and it was a mess. Um, and so I think the, you know, the past and current IFSC systems, I think are, are great for spectators. Uh, this U S system I think is great for spectators. I think it really just comes down to how it's portrayed to the people watching it. Cool. Uh, and Simon, what about yourself? Do you feel like these scoring systems making progress in terms of watchability? Yeah, I think we're uh, definitely taking steps in the right direction. Um, the IFSC system is going to offer uh, less competitors are going to sit down with a minute to go, I think. There's going to be a lot more last-ditch efforts. Cool. Um, and then the final question, I just want to get kind of your votes. At this point, if you had your choice, what's what's your ideal scoring system at this point for bouldering and please don't don't float a new one i'm not a oh god please don't offer something new but of the ones that exist out there what has your vote for the the system you would like used across the board at this point sierra you first oh this is such a loaded question but i'm gonna go with world cup <laughs> the the new one yeah the new world cup all right eddie what about you um again i'm gonna go with the world cup and 
I'm just going to clarify that because I really do like the US system. However, although it gives you a number out of 100, which is great because you can then calculate back how many tops probably they got, there's still an element of calculation. I just love being able to look and go, he got three tops, he got two tops, okay, that's it, he did better. Cool. The simplicity and the purposefulness of the current IFSC system and indeed the old IFSC system, it's just much more relatable. So, But yeah, the current IFSC system, I think, is a step in the right direction. Cool. Will, what about you? I would have to say the old IFSC system. But right. if it was perfect, <laughs> it would just be tops and there would be one winner. <laughs> and everyone else... <laughs> And everyone else didn't win. <laughs> and that's all you need to know. Okay. <laughs> and Simon, what about yourself? I'll take the new IFSC system. All right. Okay, guys, I want to thank you so much for uh, for joining me on this call. Um, again, Eddie, thank you very much for taking the time. You're welcome. And Will, you too. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks for putting up with me. Simon, thank you, and it was great to talk to you for this first time. Hopefully, we'll talk again. I hope so. And Sierra, I really appreciate you joining us, uh, and hopefully, we'll talk soon. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, guys. I know we uh, we probably opened up more questions than answers, uh, but that's it. So I hope you all have a good night. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you. That's it for this episode of Plastic Weekly. Thanks to Sierra Blair Coyle, Eddie Falk, Will Anglin, and Simon Parton for answering my questions, and thanks to you guys for listening. Plastic Weekly is presented and produced by me, Tyler Norton. If you like this episode, consider donating a dollar or two each week to my Patreon at patreon.com slash plasticweekly, or just leave a rating or review in your podcast app. But I send stickers out to most of my donors, and I know you gym nerds love stickers, so come and get them. Make sure you visit plasticweekly.com to find footnotes, references, and other bonus content related to our episodes, including links to in-depth info about the new scoring systems and a clip of Simon sending the V15 Terramer, which Will mentioned at the top of the episode. If you want to get in touch with me, you can leave a comment at plasticweekly.com and you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can send me an email to tyler at plasticweekly.com with your comments, concerns, questions, compliments. Just tell me you're out there somewhere. Good luck to everyone competing this weekend, including at the U.S. Youth Bouldering Nationals and at all six Tour de Blocs across Canada. I'll be thinking about you. Talk to you next week.